did you? My baby. <laughs> the Nissan Altima. There's a fun side to every drive. Nissan Innovation. C25. You're in the red zone with NBC 25 Friday Night Football. Now, here's Tom Eschen and Corey Coppock with all of tonight's big game action. Good evening and welcome to Friday Night Football. Happy almost Halloween, everybody. I'm Tom Eschen. I'm Corey Coppock. Yes, you are. The playoffs are here, Corey. <laughs> I thought the weather was going to be really scary considering it's Halloween this weekend, but it actually turned out to be very pleasant. I think the beginning of our show was kind of scary. <laughs> okay. we, we forgot our names. We got nowhere to go but up. <laughs> the first matchup is scary. One loss, Vassar are taking a no-loss no Ithaca. Those Yellow Jackets know the postseason well. A few plays later, here we go. Second and six on the 21-yard line. Here's Smith seeing an open Grant Gimme. Gives the Yellow Jackets the first touchdown of the game. That's pretty easy. He's got some flow going. He does. Up in third quarter, third and 16 on the 26. Look at the lateral, the Gimme. Gimme takes the ball all the way to the end zone, past the sticks, 14-0 Ithaca. 26 seconds to go in the half. Tyler Humpert gets his receivers. He's motioning. He gets them going. Robbie Atwood waiting in the end zone, catches it, gets his feet down. 14-7. Vassar trails by just seven at the half, but Ithaca just takes it from there. Watch this play. A little fumble recovery into the big line, and you might see him later in the show. Corey. It looked like if Ithaca got inside the 20 yard line, it was a gimme. It was a gimme. Ithaca wins 56 <laughs> 14. Yeah, yeah, I see what you did there. Thank you. Ithaca taking on the winner of this game right here Millington and Sanford Meridian. First half. <laughs> Don't do that. Shane Horton, a 22 yard run to give Millington the early 6 0 lead. However, later in the half, Meridian looking to answer. They're going to turn and hand it to Matt Hoffman, and Matt chugs in from four yards out. That makes it an 8-6 ball game as he runs over the would-be tackler. Mm -hmm. Millington had their own response. Caleb Washer is going to heave it 46 yards. That's to Sean par Pardee to make it a 12-8 Millington lead, but it's Meridian with the last lap. They come back with a huge second half and win it 44-38. Oh, yeah, we had a few comebacks tonight, Corey. That brings us to our game of the week. It's Midland and Midland Dow. These two teams met just a week ago, and it was a terrific game. Dow pulling it out at the end. Actually, they kind of they kind of pulled away at the end, 49-28. Yeah. Now, would the second verse be like the first for the Chemics and the Chargers? Corey, Herman's name Hermits? that song. Herman's Hermits. Herman's Hermits, that's <laughs> right. Let's go to the best place in this one. Entering the 8th IM, right? <laughs> you got that one? <laughs> Let's go some of the highlights from this game. Dow pretty much all night long over Midland. They dominated from the start. Those receivers that we talked about yesterday, Corey, that you talked about uh, in that piece you did, just dominating all the way through. And then there's Bruce Mann running it in after that long gain. And then we have a little bit of a defense played here by Dow. Tonight. By Mike Robb, Mike one Robb, of the receivers. Who's usually, the, yeah. who's usually on the receiving end, but this time he's on the receiving end of an interception, mind you. Right place, Corey. right time. Right place, right time is right. So Dow goes on to win tonight over Midland. Well, you know, I mean, Midland's a rival, right? I mean, they're, they're our rival. They're the team that we share the town with. They're the kids we sit next to in church and get involved in Boy Scouts, and we coach each other. I mean, their D-line coach is my son's baseball coach this spring, right? I mean, we're close. And so to be able to, to do well and play good games and play some of your best football on this stage against them, I'm just so happy for our kids and so proud of how we came out these two weeks. Gotta love coach there. Now, Dow will play Fenton, who beat Holly by just one point, 21-20. The last time Frankenmuth and Birch Run met, Frankenmuth embarrassed the Panthers 37-8 in Week 2. Could the Eagles do it again? They tried to go to the ground game in the first half here, but they cough it up, and the Panthers are all over it. It's Panther offense with terrific field possession, and they cash in two plays mm. later, Logan Bovey to Jared Schnellenberger for the touchdown, yes. and we're tied at 14. However, Frankenmuth takes over on the next drive. It's Jack Taggett. Across the middle to a wide open Jared Davis. He's all by himself and goes 54 yards. Frankenmuth wins in convincing fashion, 42 to 27. 
The winner of that game taking on the winner of Freeland and Garber. Water is key, as Bobby Boucher would attest. High and they had some H2O. of that. So even though it's cold, you got to still drink your water. Second quarter, Falcons up a few scores, stays that way. Logan Martin sacked by Chad Kushner. So it's fourth and a million. They go for it. Martin looking over the middle. He spins out of a sack. Nice there. He finds Lucas Stella for the big game, but that's how many yards they needed. They didn't even get the first down on that one. Still a nice play. A couple minutes later, Freeland on fourth down. Skyler Armstrong runs it in. Freeland coasting at this point. They're 10-0. They win at 68-12. And some other action to tell you about in district semifinal. Sandusky 35, Unionville Seabowing 0. They will play Cass City, who beat Ubley 34-6. Michigan Lutheran Seminary was all over Bay City all stage 54-14. And Fowler handed it to Merrill on the road 29-0. Well, our district finals continue to take shape, but we have to take a break for now. Find out if Beecher could advance as we continue here on Friday Night Football. Hey, we're the Brandon Blackhawks, and you're watching Friday Night Football on NBC 25. Woo! Go, Brandon! <laughs> NBC Friday Night Football is sponsored in part. And that's cool. Features. So hurry into your Honda dealer today and you could get a great deal on a 2015 Civic during the Honda for You sales event. Friday Night Football is sponsored in part by Weiss Equipment. NBC 25 Friday Night Football is sponsored in part by Security Credit Union. Dedicated, secure, trusted. Stay right here. You're watching NBC 25 Friday Night Football. This is NBC 25 Friday Night Football. Welcome back to Friday Night Football. I'm Tom Esch and that's Corey Kopic. Our first round playoff coverage continues. Teams five wins from a championship. Now the road to Ford Field starts tonight. Let's get back to the action. We're mm -hmm. not going to waste any more time. Brandon no. at Linden. Let's go. Second quarter, the Eagles. Aaron Sarkin. <laughs> we always thought we always call this guy's name every time Linden plays. Aaron Sarkin with a huge pass play. This one's going to cover 40 yards to Nolan Hill, but that's as far as Linden would get. They would get a, a touchdown from Ryan Young later on in the game, and Linden beats Brandon 20 to three. And then we uh, have Orchard Lake St. Mary's over Bay City John Glenn in that bracket. So that means Linden will face Orchard Lake St. Mary's next week. Can't wait to see what happens in that game. Me neither, Corey. Powers and Goodrich went at it as well tonight. The Chargers dominated all night long, too. They go on to win 41 0. Noah Sargent, 12 for 15, 296 yards passing, four touchdowns, and 141 rushing yards. Beautiful performance out of him. So who they play? Lake Fenton, the upset over Corona. They win 29 27. Beecher head coach Courtney Hawkins had his hands full tonight as the Buccaneers took on Hamity. The winner would face Cap Powers Catholic in round two. We're tied at 14. Hamity's Amari Blake throws the pass out of bounds, but he's in the end zone when he does it, so it's called intentional grounding, and that's a safety. Beecher goes up 16-14 later. Third and 11, Blake checks down to Jerry Nard, and Nard is running hard down the right <laughs> sideline before being taken down inside the five-yard line. He got some yards there. He got some yards, did Jerry Nard. <laughs> <laughs> the Hawks turn to Blake one more time at the goal line. He comes through rolling around the right side, plowing into the end zone to make a 22-16. However, it was Beecher with a massive second-half comeback. They would come back to win the game 30-28. New Lothrop was all over Rochester Hills, Lutheran Northwest, merciless, 43 to nothing. And some other action tonight as well. You can see there, Lapeer beat Davidson. Mount Pleasant plays tomorrow. How about some soccer there? That's Northwood getting a goal early on SVSU for the GLIAC regular season title game. That's in the first half. A little later in the second half, James Vaughn looking for more spectacular save by Alex Wienetch. One more look at it. <laughs> Keeps the score one nothing. Beautiful there, getting late for the cards. A free kick is cleared. Northwood wins the GLIAC regular season title one to nothing. They'll host the GLIAC conference tournament next week. <laughs> so it's time now for our game ball segment. We brought right. the balls today, Corey. We did, finally. I'll go, my, I'll go first. My game ball is going to go to Powers Catholic quarterback mm -hmm. Noah Sargent. Noah was just a beast tonight, racking up a total yard. What was the total yards? Five, 437. There you oh, have to lead the Chargers to a convincing win over a Goodrich team. We've seen him do it all year, and as long as he's at the helm, Powers has a chance.